Hey guys, welcome to an extensive guide on how to defend a ram rush. I've released a few fast castle and fast imperial guides and one of the most common responses and questions I get is how do I not die to a ram timing when I don't have any units out to begin with until like 9 minutes or so. So in this video guide I am going to cover everything you need to consider when denying a ram rush. When you're learning the game, uh, you're going to be implementing new build orders like a fast castle or double TC build, so it can be difficult to overcome any aggressive feudal pressure or any ram pushes that your enemy throws your way. I highly recommend you stick around for the whole video because there are quite a few components that work together in order to deny a ram rush or early aggression altogether. Before we jump into the next steps of how to defend a ram rush, I want to kind of touch on what I believe the strongest sieves for the ram rush are and also how common they are. So at number one we have the English. The reason being is since they changed the town center focus fire, town centers can now retarget from rams to your military units. Keep in mind this is only the original TC, second TCs cannot do this. But this just means archers can't sit under your base and shoot everything that's around your town center. So what does that mean? That means the English, their extra range on the longbows, that gives them an advantage. They can walk up closer to the TC without being shot and they can focus down military, villages, whatever it may be. That's why the English ram rush is probably one of the most potent at the moment. Next we have number two is the Mongols. Mongols are able to get out units really fast because they can double produce from their Ovu and that is why they are up there as well. So French Royal Knights are hard to deal with, harder to deal with in Age 2. Not as crazy as it was before now that pikemen are a lot better. But then from 4 to 6, all of these guys, the reason I don't have them as high is not necessarily because they're push is worse although in most cases it is but it's because that they have better options rather than rushing your opponent so holy roman empire fast castle getting relics uh, you can have a crazy boom that way you could even go imperial and get palace of swabia and boom even harder um, the avacid double tc opening is by far the most meta build and also probably one of their strongest right now um and the China also has a great boom and they also want to be getting late game. So late game is where China thrives, which is why I don't have them up higher. Rus, they have the fast castle build. They almost never ram timing you anymore, even though it is quite solid with this sieve. It's just that the fast castle horse archer build is just so dominant right now. And number eight, Delhi. Well, Delhi's got to wait a few years until they can get their siege engineering in. So you don't have to be too worried about that. You can get up to your castle pretty safely and no worries. Now this is a list of the five most important things you have to do and consider in any game to be prepared for a ram rush. So number one is have your opening build order refined. So basically what I mean by this, you want to have your build order down pat so you're getting up to age two as quick as possible. And in the case that you want a fast castle or whatever it might be, you're getting up to castle as early as possible. Because that whole minute difference, say you're aging up at 9 minutes 30 compared to 8 minutes 30, that's a big difference in when how much extra units the opponent can have and the rams and all of that kind of thing. So you're less likely to be denied to castle. But we'll cover, I mean, changing your plan based on a certain build order. But just have at least your build order refined to get to age 2 efficiently. Um, and then the, the early stages of age 2 is also efficient. Number 2, scouting your opponent. This is the first step in being able to adapt and to know that the ram rush is coming in the first place. And coming hand in hand with scouting is changing your strategy. So you should have an idea of what you need to be doing when a ram rush is likely on the horizon. You've scouted a military building, you've scouted a blacksmith, or maybe you've just scouted the military building and you go, okay, I need to respond to this. If you don't know what you need to be doing, don't worry, that is a perfect segue into our next point, which is number three, making county units. So 
you've scouted your opponent, you see the military building they have. For example, they put down an archery range. So you want to consider what your county unit is. I've put together this list of county units here on what I recommend to make if you scout your opponent is making the other type of unit. When your opponent, you scout your opponent is making archers, you want to initially open with horsemen and then you want to add in archers. The reason you want to add in archers is because you're anticipating your opponent is going to add in pikes to counter your horsemen. So you don't want to get caught with your pants down and you only have horsemen and they all of a sudden have like five pikes to back up the archers. That's the reason behind that. Um, next we have horsemen and archers. The reason we're countering with pikemen and archers and not pikemen horsemen is because if you go with your horsemen um, pikemen, it, there's a good chance that your opponent will quickly add in pikemen and then basically your whole unit composition is useless. You don't have anything to counter pikemen. Unless you're on top of it and you add in your third unit quicker, then maybe you could start with horsemen pikemen. Let's move on to the next one, which is the knights and archers here. Um, the reason we have horsemen and pikemen here um, is because archers don't do any damage to knights at all. Like the only use they have in that matchup is to kill archers. Um, whereas if it was horsemen and archers, the archers actually do a solid amount of damage against horsemen in mass. Um, but knights is a no-go. They absolutely destroy archers. Um, the only time you would add in archers as well, if you're going a super extended age three and they add in pikes as well, then you would need archers. So that's my recommendation against only the sibs. It's going to be is French and Rus. That's it's more likely going to be French though, but those are the counter units there. Um, if your opponent is going pike and archers, you can go just fully archers. You can also add in um, horsemen as well. If you if you'd prefer the, the main thing is you need to have a, a solid amount of archers though because if your archers are heavily outmassed you're not going to be able to kill the pikes with your archers because these archers are going to kill you first and then the pikes can deal with your horsemen so the main thing is you need an equal if you have an equal mass you need horsemen as well um but yeah generally speaking you want to focus on having a large archer mass and the final one is men at arms and archers um there is a caveat with this. Firstly, if you are playing the Rus or the French, you can just make knights. But if you're any other Civ, I recommend either not making any units at all and just trying to get up to the third age, or you can make enough archers to snipe his archers and then the town center can go to town on the men at arms while you try and get up to the next age. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if they are going heavily men at arms, you should be able to snipe the rams without losing too many vills. Like, if your your men at arms, they need to run around and they can't shoot from range, obviously. So if you can pop your vills out of the town center or from the wood line or wherever they're coming from, throw a few swings, get back in the town center and just repeat that until the rams are dead. So that covers the counter system. Hopefully this helps with the understanding on what units you should make based on what you're scouting and what your opponent is bringing to your base. So this brings us to point four and five, which is Bill's sieging and defense micro. So we want to be able to optimize how we're using our bills to destroy rams. So we're not losing too many in, in the process of it. We're also going to take a look at some micro of defending your base. Um, we're going to take a look at two games. One was me against Somsom. Um, this is going to point out a few flaws in the way he defended my ram rush. And then we're going to take a look at Thinky King versus Lucifron, where Lucifron adapts his strategy and manages to defend the ram rush perfectly. I'm just going to show you what he does to respond to this. So far, he has not seen my archery ranges. He sees them now. So he sees my archers. He sees my triple archery ranges. First mistake, he responds with an archery range. So he's seen that I have, say, 10 archers here. 10 archers. And I have triple archery range here. And he's responding with another archery range of his own. Um, and he's just never going to outproduce me because I'm also on double TC. My vills are half the cost of his. 
and like in the short term he knows that i'm not gonna like he's not gonna be out be able to outproduce me yes he can supervise it but um it just it still won't be the same so it's gonna make it very difficult for him to be able to defend this and first ram coming in i'm gonna slow it down a little bit here let's see what he does so as the ram rammer <laughs> I'm starting with houses. I want to reduce as much production as possible at this stage. Keeping the archers outside of the range of the TC. So you don't want to be going with your vills until the ram is close to your town center or you have a larger mass to push away the army so your vills can actually siege it. Alright, coming in here. So I want to go to his second town center. So I'm actually coming around here for the second TC now just outside of the range of that TC Bill's all suiciding for this they've got no other option right I pick off five six seven eight villages there for free not for free but for a good cost there so I got more archers flying in he's still like not gonna be able to outproduce me here his villas were idle trying to siege rams it inside the TC um, so, I want to explain what to, what you can do from his perspective here. So, first mistake, wrong counter unit. Um, he made the same unit as me, which is not helpful. He's trying to build a wall, which I guess is pretty smart. He's forcing me to walk through the town center fire here, but he does lose three villages for it. So, these villages can't come out yet because he needs to wait to use his TC fire on my archers. That is when he's going to have the best chance of sieging down my ram. So at this stage, he has a lot less units and to be honest, there's really not much he can do. Like the first mistake was scouting too late and not knowing what I was doing. But if we move on to here as well, um, say for example, you had horsemen here. Um, if, if you had horsemen and archers on the back line as well, um, you could push back my archers. There's no way my archers want to stand still and shoot the villagers while horsemen are just killing all the archers. Um, having the county unit would really help here, but otherwise the ramps are getting close to the town center and that's when you want to consider using your villagers to siege. But keep in mind here, another thing I want to talk about is patience is also really helpful. Um, let's go to his perspective, see how much... Okay, he is floating way too much gold. Um, let's just assume he had those on wood for a minute and pretend that you would in a game as well. You wouldn't float this uh, much gold. But um, just sack this archery range, build it close behind the TC. Build another one close behind the TC. Um, so that the rams are forced to come right under the TC in order to destroy any military production buildings um obviously right here i can still shoot from slightly outside range of the tc um and the rams can continue to do their damage okay so this is kind of what you have to do right if you're in his position honestly i would sack this archery range altogether but in his situation, he doesn't have any wood to do what I would recommend, which is to sack this and then build like one or two at the back. Um, but in this situation, I think he's made the right decision for where he is at this stage of the game. Obviously, he made a few mistakes leading up to this, but he, when whenever you're coming in to siege a ram, you want all of your army to be attacking the, the opponent. Um, this will kind of hopefully distract the military and not kill all the bills but in this situation like the mass difference is so big that it doesn't really matter 27 to 9 literally triple his size in archers um also got one attack where he doesn't let's take a look at a ram rush defense that was successful and let's try and take away some points on what we should be doing and what we should be looking at how we should adapt our strategy based on what we're scouting. Okay, let's assess the situation here. Um, okay, my minimap is bugged. Let's let's reveal all this. Um, Lucifron has scouted that his enemy put down an archery range. This barracks came in later. Um, so at this point in time, I'm 
see if it's unbugged itself. It's it, but um, he scouted the archery range. He decides to avoid going um, straight up to castle because the Mongol uh, ram rush is quite potent, and they can have a lot of units and rams out quite early on. So he's opted to go double stable and make some knights here. So I'm gonna slow it down a little bit here. Um, now he sees pikes. It'll be interesting. Look, there you go. Sees pikes straight away, puts down an archery range. And this kind of comes back to the counter system I was talking about, right? Rus has the advantage, the disadvantage of not making units as early on, but they have the advantage of then countering what the opponent is making. So Dinky King obviously has to make pikes here because the knights um, will just destroy his archers. So then Lucifron responds by making archers to deal with the pikemen. Inky is still being very aggressive. He knows knights are on the map. And in this situation, I'd imagine he's also going to be raiding. So it's another thing you can do is divert the attention, make your opponent multitask a lot. And you can also cut off reinforcements, which is a bit more an advanced thing to do um, if you are under a lot of pressure instead of if you can't take on this army initially. You go behind where the, the units are streaming in and you clean up those, those units because they're going to be in smaller numbers. And the last Dinky King is coming in for the ram push here. Let's see the micro and the decision making of Lucifron. Lucifron spots that there's no units nearby, a little bit of a miss up, misplay from Dinky, so he's coming out with Vils. Dinky sees this, pulls back the ram, which is the correct thing. So Ram is coming in to destroy buildings. Obviously the archers can't get too close, otherwise the TC will fire. So now Lucifron is using that to his advantage, taking one swing and coming back. Yep, that's exactly what he does there. The reason is, if he goes out too far trying to kill this, the TC won't be able to help him out and shoot the units. He obviously doesn't have the mass to directly fight his army, so he's opting just to take it one, one hit at a time, trying to burn down some of the damage without losing all of his wills. So one will does go down. Probably chased it a little bit far there, not utilizing his TC fire as well as he could. But let's see how this plays out here. Coming out for another swing. Free swing while Dinky isn't paying attention, and he'll probably back off here. Very nicely done, not losing any vills. He still doesn't have quite the mass to fight yet. Okay, this is a little bit of a misplay here from Lucifron. Um, he's gone out too far without his units. If his units were there to back it up, it would have been fine. Uh, but he's lost a few extra bills here. Okay, Lucifron coming out for another swing and we'll probably pull back here until the archers are in range, or he's just going to straight up fight him, but it doesn't look like he quite has the numbers. Very close, but he doesn't want to force it yet. So at this stage, Lisfron is at 31 bills, Dinky is also at 31, so... I'm not sure what happened there actually, maybe he got raided. Or he's just idled his TC a little bit. But he's just continuing to mass the counter unit of his opponent. Which is mostly just archers because Mongols has so many pikes. Doesn't actually look like he's mining any gold, so he's just trading for the gold for a few few knights here. Um, and he's just gonna rely on the fact that he has more archers, which he does at the moment. He has more archers. Um, but here comes Mongols for round two. Let's see how he goes. Same thing, goes in for a swing of the rams, um, but won't go out any further than what the TC can help the, the army fight um, the Mongols here. Now, when this happens, you're bound to lose like a couple of vills. Um, it, it's hard to put, do this perfectly, um, especially when the opponent is on the ball with pulling back the rams as soon as the vills are going to attack it. 
keep in mind though that your opponent is investing a lot of resources into these rams and now that he's invested so many into rams it looks like the rus have a comparable army to the mongols despite the mongols being able to double produce so archers are focusing down the the pikes so that the knights can once these are dead come and have free reign on the archers here And look at this, Lucifron has managed to clean up, with the counter unit system here working perfectly and nice micro in that fight, um, he's been able to punish the Mongols because one, they have invested 600 resources into rams, um, and two, that the Rus was able to have a better unit combi like combination here, couple knights and more archers, right? Um, the reason he has more archers is because the Mongol player has to invest in more pikes to deal with any knights that come along. Um, and also, he's investing into rams. So, I'd imagine it's over from here. So, I've kind of shown you um, an example of some mistakes that can happen if you are defending a ram rush. And this is... Um, I wouldn't say perfect, but almost perfect, and it's allowed me to demonstrate like the micro that's required with the vills, um, and utilizing the defense of your town center to, to negate the, the tower rush altogether. Um, from here, it's going to be hard for the Mongols. Um, I know that the eco was relatively even, but Rus has professional scouts, and now he has the advantage. Destroyed the landmark here, which is pretty big. And from here, another thing. Now he can go back to aging and doing what he was doing before. So whenever you have a build order, like following one of mine on YouTube or anyone else's, if it's something like a fast castle, scout and deviate from the plan if it's required. If you're up against the English, I'm sure Lucifron would have done the same. But he's also up against the Mongols, which also, as I mentioned before, was number two on my list in terms of like the p most potent and common ram rushes. Um, keep in mind, Dinky King is a very high level player. Um, I call him, well, and a lot of other people call him the King of Ram Rushes, because he's probably one of the, the top players that plays, um, that does the Ram Rush as often as anyone else would. So, yeah, he, he's the King of Ram Rushes, and Lucifron has showed you exactly how you can deviate from your plan. There's no doubt in my mind that Lucifron went into this game going, I'm probably going to go the Horse Archer build. But he scouted the Mongols, saw he was going for feudal pressure, and he adapted. He made the counter units, he microed the town center and the villages perfectly to negate any real damage coming in. He built his military buildings really close to his base so that the rams had to come in further. It's another thing that I forgot to mention, but that is another important factor here. Well, that is it guys that is the conclusion to my extensive guide on defending a ram rush hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully you can now kind of use these tips to adapt to your games and be able to make the right units at the right time for um, denying this feudal age pressure so again if you found this useful please consider liking and subscribing it really helps support the channel put a lot of time into this video so hopefully you do get the value out of it thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video